Hello. Um, this is a brief presentation of a study on sexual harassment in biological anthropology in Portugal, jointly prepared by the Research Center of Anthropology and Health and the Portuguese Union of Archaeology. The teaching of biological anthropology has come a long way in Portugal, spanning from the 19th century when it first appeared in Coimbra. Later, in the 1980s, it was extended to Evora and during the 21st century to the Lisbon universities. Biological anthropology courses um, are currently present in degree programs of anthropology, archaeology, biology, and criminology. Work on the biological anthropology field in Portugal can be carried out in a strictly academic environment or in public institutions and commercial companies. Only more recent studies and reflections have been developed on the professional context of academic and scientific activities. The conditions under which the work in biological anthropology is performed in Portugal are only now starting to be addressed. One of the most important studies about the profession is the profile of the anthropologist in Portugal, presented by the Portuguese Association of Anthropology in 2016. Research on sexual harassment was designed for the areas of archaeology and biological anthropology. The joint presence of both areas exists because often, both in academic and commercial teams, the scientific fields are interrelated. These studies have, have, uh, have had a wide impact on researchers and professionals with exhibitions, symposia, roundtables to warm about team, with news in the generalists and specialized press. In several discussions that followed, the problem of sexism and consequent sexual harassment was discussed not only as a labor problem, but also as an ethical issue. Following several international studies on gender and abuse in the biological anthropology and, archeolo uh, and archeology, span this presentation aims to identify and study the presence of sexist behaviors and sexual abuse in the context of activities in biological anthropology, both in commercial and academic circles, and two, suggest lines of action to reduce or eliminate the impact of sexism and sexual harassment in academic and commercial environments. This is a reality not yet studied in Portugal. A vast and detailed online survey was created and subsequently made available through information passed on to, researcher, to research centers, associations, and social media. The, per, the participants were students, researchers, and workers in the field of biological anthropology, regardless of the, sub, the subfield or whether they worked in the laboratory or in the field. The study was designed as having four sections with both open and closed answers, all being optional. The Portuguese community in biological anthropology is small and close to each other. Thus, the option was to disseminate the study in a more incisive way. In the groups of biological anthropology in Portugal, existing on social networks, and to ask for their distribution through the anthropology research centers and the Portuguese Anthropology Association. Ethics concern, uh, concerns were taken. Uh, les les legislation on personal data collection was mentioned and followed. A mental health warning was made when presenting the study. A total number of 57 surveys was validated. This is a representative sample. If you consider, for example, that there are uh, 136 anthropologists working in archaeology, which is a public heritage data from an ongoing research. Respondents were mostly female, whereas men were only 22.8% of the sample. The best represented age interval is the 30-39 years. 
and the mean age was 36.60 years. About sexism. More than half of the respondents recognize the existence of a sexist workplace, with 50% of females and 61.5% of males. On the open answers, the respondents mentioned the heaviest tasks being give, given primarily to the male elements of the teams, which is double prejudice, affecting both males and female members. Women report, uh, reported feeling value by their appearance, and on the other hand, see the authority called into question. But curiously, males reported feeling some prejudice, since in Portugal, Biological anthropology is perceived as a more feminine field. 38.6 assume they have already been the target of sexist behavior. The difference is high by 20 points between the female respondents and the males. Inappropriate or sexual comments were reported as a moderate behavior by 37.5% of the respondents and highly frequent by 8.8%, totalizing 46.3%, almost half of the sample. When asked about personal experience of sexual harassment, 47.4% answer affirmatively. The female respondents report higher values than male. 50 versus 38.5%. Uh, when asked about the career position occupied by the respondents at the time of the harassment, PhD students, field assistants, and laboratory and field chiefs uh, had all more than half positive answers. And in the open answers, the respondents mentioned the pressure to change behavior or clothing to avoid harassment. Even more serious are the references to the objectification of biological anthropology workers, with phrases like anthropologists are seen as fresh meat, and others like they are also object of conversations about the body or beauty. Usually, the objectification's targets are the female elements of the biological anthropology teams which may explain the difference in values in the previous, previous answer. The victims of harassment were questioned about the harassment report. There was no pre-established harassment reporting mechanism in any workplace. Only 36% of the victims have reported the harassment episode and none of them felt satisfied with the report or outcome. About sexual assault in the workplace, it was, it was asked, have you ever experienced physical sexual and wanted sexual contact or sexual contact in which you could not or did not give consent? Did you, did you think it would be unsafe to deny or not to give consent in a work in biological anthropology? And 12.3% responded censor affirmatively. The majority of sexual assault victims were females. On the open answers, the respondents mentioned the pressure to change behavior or clothing to avoid harassment. There were two types of reports, both worrisome and serious. The ones that mentioned concrete situations of sexual assault, like this one. I was harassed by my supervisor. Personally, I felt, very, I felt very disgusted and angry. A few months later, I left anthropology and I can say I don't miss this environment at all. And see, see my frustrated reports of situations that the victim were never targets by having no witnesses or being devalued as an attempt to overcome the traumatic episode of complaint. My personal experience with physical contact was just unwanted touches, but not explicit enough to support a formal complaint. 
the victims of sexual assault were also inquired about this report. There was no pre established harassment report, reporting mechanism in 70% of the workplaces, and only 42.9% of the victims have reported the sexual assault episode. Four answered the questions about the, the outcome of the report, and only one of them felt satisfied. Another set of questions regarded the existence of a code of conduct or policy against sexual harassment in the workplace. Both questions result in a strongly negative or in strongly negative worrying answers. So the results of our study are shocking as they attest the existence of a sexist, sexist work environment with the moderate to frequent presence of episodes of sexual harassment on students or workers, and with the recording of more than 12% of workers going through traumatic experience of sexual assault as part of their work in biological anthropology. These situations were referred to as causing the change of workplace, the total abandon abandonment of work in biological anthropology, as well as causing depression and problems in the workers' personal lives. The results of our research are, are, however, in line with those obtained in, in other studies. It is situated practically at average observed in other parts of the globe. This shows that the problem is not local, but systemic, and prevention and action measures should be designed with this circumstance in mind. So we think what to do. We must talk about it. It is very important to talk about sexism and sexual harassment as a real problem, existing in very various fields and scientific disciplines, and spe uh, specifically also in biological anthropology in Portugal. This is the first step towards raising awareness of possible victims and perpetrators. Secondly, prevent it. It is essential that codes of conduct are created in the various organizations where biological anthropology works. This Portuguese law, by Portuguese law codes of conduct, uh, by Portuguese law, codes of conduct are required in institutions with more than seven workers. So they could exist and are not being shown or discussed with, with the team, or the institutions don't have them and are violating the law. It also seems to us that policies against harassment and codes of conduct should be implemented not only in institutions such as companies or universities, but also in research centers, laboratories, projects, fieldwork campaigns, and scientific meetings. Finally, act upon it. Secure reporting mechanisms should be developed more than one person should be responsible for receiving complaints with direct contacts via email or phone. And preferably, these people should be external to the teams. Reporting mechanisms should be clear in the anti harassment codes, as well as those to be taken against erasers. We finally would like to thank the organization for having us and to all respondent, respondents for sharing their experiences and opinions with us.